Hello everyone, welcome back to the Proquest Gauntlet Everfest Edition with myself, Hayden Dale, and Brendan Patrick right here next to me. We are the hosts of Arsenal Pass, a flesh and blood podcast, as well as a YouTube uh, channel with the same name, focusing on all things gameplay, deck techs, and just leveling up in flesh and blood. This is our third video in the ProQuest Gauntlet Everfest Edition, where we're, we are running some of the top decks of the format, you know, the metagame right now for this ProQuest season, into one another. We have six heroes. Three games and we're battling it out to see who's uh you know gonna come up on top in these games so far we've had two very good games you can check those out and brennan here we are with our third game i'm gonna be on lexi and you're gonna be on briar tell us a bit about briar and the deck list that you're running obviously you know a hero that's been very prevalent in flesh and blood especially in the last meta game yep so briar's in a very briar is in a very interesting spot after tales of aria mostly because of the errata on her hero ability only allowing you to get one embodiment of Earth per turn, as well as the ban to Ball Lightning and Plunder Run, which are pretty key cards to the deck. Um, mostly Plunder Run. <laughs> so the deck's in a very interesting spot, I think, right now. Um, the list that I'm playing is kind of harkens back to that zero cost Briar list, but it does play Channel Mount Heroic as well. So we saw this sort of hybrid, hybrid Briar, right? It was an Earth Briar that also was going for the zero cost or Cheerios. We saw this back in Tails as well, but more towards the latter end of the season. Um, and it did perform pretty well. So that I think that version of Briar has aged the best into Everfest. That being said, Briar has gotten, you know, some upgrades as well with the other Rune Blades, specifically Revel and Rune Blood and Swarming Gloomvale. So it's in an okay spot right now. I think it's more of a kind of a meta call, right? I think uh, you know, Briar tends to struggle a bit into one of the one of the most popular decks right now, which is Bravo Star of the Show. Yeah, but we've seen Briar do really well. I mean, both the, the decks that we're playing today. Uh, Lexi and um, this Briar list are both both progress winners and we've seen them come out in force and spike some events and still be pretty represented in the top eight so if we're looking to you know make sure that we can we have a plan against Briar we want to beat Briar at our upcoming pro quest this weekend what are sort of three maybe things that you can give three tips you can give for beating Briar in this current format yeah so actually a lot of the rune blades shares kind of the same weaknesses so the first one's going to be disruption um, you know, disrupting Briar's hand or their arsenal is pretty bad. Another form of disruption is tax. So that, in, you know, that's Ice Lexi or Ice in general. So channel like Frigid, um, Frostbite tokens, those are not very nice for a deck that doesn't want to pitch for, you know, most things. Um, luckily, this one does have a bit of a blue base because of channel not heroic. So a bit more resilient, but still, nevertheless, those, um, those Frostbite tokens are not great. And then finally... With the banning of Plunder Run and you know Briar's ability getting that errata, there are some decks in this format that are actually faster than it. So you can actually out aggro the aggro deck. Um, so yeah, I think that those are kind of the three ways that I would look at attacking Briar, which is funny because it's <laughs> pretty similar for the other two Rune Blades as well. What about you, Hayden? Tell me about Lexi and Everfest. Yeah, I mean Lexi, you know, obviously new in Tales of Aria, uh, had a pretty reasonable season through that Nationals, was sort of that kind of uh, the, the medical, right? The, the dark horse that we saw Isaac Jessen take it to a top eight at US Nationals with the Ice Lexi build. And then we did see Lexi throughout the season. And I think with uh, with Everfest, we've seen Lexi's stock really rise. And, and this ProQuest season, we've seen Lexi take a number of ProQuest wins as well as top eights and do really well with different builds, be it, you know, sort of more ice focused builds, this kind of uh, elementless kind of build, which is very similar to what I'm playing today with a bit of ice involved with it. And then uh, these kind of lightning builds as well, they're a bit more aggressive. So the one I'm on today, as I say, is a bit uh, is a bit less of that elemental fuse focus and is more focused on just really good on-hit effects, uh, which is, I think, quite important in this format. Mm -hmm. and then in terms Definitely. of, you know, you talked about how to beat Briar in this format. If you want to target Lexi in this format, I think there's three things from, from this side as well. One of the big things when you're playing into Lexi, I think, with the current builds is uh, Endless Arrows. You want to, Endless Arrows is a really, really powerful tool in these, uh, especially these sort of like fuseless or uh, low element Lexi builds. And you want to make sure that the Lexi player isn't able to get massive value off of those off of those endless arrows. Um, arsenal pressure, a really big one for all rangers is being able to pressure that arsenal, uh, you know, especially as Lexi with the new horizon and wanting to have, you know, often two two cards in arsenal, uh, things like command and conquer, um, you know, uh, disable in, in guardian. These are cards that can really put pressure on the arsenal and are very important for sort of disrupting what, what the rangers are trying to do with their arsenal you know be it you know start with a card to flip to lexi's ability or or come in with an arrow at the end of the chain from the arsenal and then last for me would just be uh you know recognizing their big turns so there's some really big spike turns that lexi can have with like three of a kind um and you know rain raises and just understanding the pressure that these turns can kind of put on and how to how to kind of play around these often maybe you want to just throw your whole hand to defend that turn 
um, and then try and take the tempo of the game later on. But it's really important to recognize what you're going to do on those turns because those turns can be worth like 25 plus damage. So I think having a plan for those turns is really important. All right, Brennan, let's get into it. Would you like odd or even? I'll take odd. All right, it is odd. It's a three. Mm, look at that. All right, so against Lexi, I think I'm going to go first. That's fair. I, I, would, uh, I wouldn't mind going first, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. Yep. Best of luck. Good luck. Yeah, good luck to you, sir. Well, our hand is not fantastic. You have Arcane Barrier on the, the Bracers, right? I do, yeah. We have, we have Arcane Barrier on the Bullseye Bracers. Correct. Mm -hmm. You mean you don't have Channel Met Harak on turn one? Um, you know, we could roll back if you want. <laughs> All right. So on my turn, I am just going to make a rune chant with the rasp mm -hmm. and i will ask uh priority sir okay so you still have your action point so we can vault here end of turn get, get an arrow into an arsenal but uh you know brendan still has three cards in hand and two well, our, our resource up so it could put some pressure on us um yeah really really close one we know like we know brack can put out some pretty explosive damage so he's got Go again is a bit harder, but if he's got an entwine lightning that he can fuse, and even if he can just come in with you know an attack for six or something, that could be tough for us. So, I think since our hand is okay, probably okay here. All right, I'm gonna pitch this lightning press to Voltaire and okay. put this fatigue shot in, and then I'll pass priority back to you. All right, so you have one card in hand, I have two cards in hand. Oh, you have two cards, I have two cards okay, hand. yeah, yeah. Um. Well, so if I attack Hader right now, um, I can do some damage, but it's not great. That's the problem. I don't think I'm going to, I'm only going to be coming in for eight and I'm not going to have an arsenal. So that's kind of my biggest limiter here. I would like to punish him for that move, but if I was going to do that, I think I would have need, needed to keep that sting of sorcery. So, yeah, definitely a bit risky on Hayden's end, but we're going to go ahead and let him get away with that. All right, I'll pass. Yeah, for me, it comes down to just how, how I really want to get an arrow and now filter a card, since you have a five-card hand. And um, I'd, I'd give up three to four damage for that pretty, pretty happily. All right, uh, drop back up to four. Let's do it. All right, tunic to one. All right. So you can see that Hayden, yeah, go ahead, Hayden. You can see Hayden is on the, the tunic. I am not, just to kind of help with some of these on-hit triggers. Um, that being said, it's also a hedge against uh, Lightning Lexi, or sorry, Ice Lexi, where tunic can be quite bad. So there's the Endless Arrow Hayden talked about. I did. I'm going to choose Go again with this Endless Arrow off Voltaire's ability. Sure. Uh, so pitching this Frost Lock, and then we're going to play Endless Arrow, coming with a four with Go again. Track of how many times you use Voltaire here. I'm in for four with Go again. Indeed. So, on our end, we do not have an embodiment, which makes us harder. And I would like to keep my entire hand. My goal is definitely to put as much pressure on uh, Brennan's hand as possible with on hit effects and uh, just try and strip Brennan down to like three card hands as much as possible if we can, or just push damage and get these on hit effects and get as much value out of cards like Endless Arrow. Uh, we've got a fatigue shot here that Brennan knows is going to be coming in as well. Yeah, we do know the fatigue shots coming in. Um, all right, actually presenting me with a tough situation here, Aiden. Just due to the nature of this, uh, I wonder if it's worth blocking with armor right now just to stop the endless arrow. But I have so little information. How many fatigue shots for five? It is, yeah, it's red. Yep. Um, are they locked with armor? What else am I worried about? Yeah, because I think I'm going to be able to, be, uh, to better block these uh, endless arrows when I have embodiment. So I'm going to go ahead and skill out a grasp here. Okay. Oh, so we're defending that out. Equipment. Which I'm not sure about. And then we're just going to be coming with fatigue shot for five here. 
A triple arrow too. Sure. Yeah, I will say no blocks, two fatigue shots. Sure. So taking five. Yep. We're gonna 40 get place thirty-five. Yep. So the uh, the first attack next turn is gonna get half its base attack rounded up. Yep. Sorry, attack action card. It doesn't, yes, doesn't have any weapons. And then we're just going to hustle and pass. See you. All right. Draw On my turn, we will play Entwine Lightning. And we'll fuse. Okay. So come in for two. And one arcade. Uh, one it. One it. Okay. You've got a pulse. If anyone wants to keep his whole mm -hmm. hand, so just thinking about, you know, what, what could be coming after this, we're probably okay to take the one, and then we'll also take the two down to 37 here. 37 plus 35. Make use of fatigue shot there. I'll break the chain. Sure. You have an embodiment we'll play... of full earth now. I well. do have an embodiment of earth. And then we will play Pulse of Candlehold. I'll put this guy on top. And it's up to, so it's fine. And then we're going to play Revel. Create an embodiment of lightning here. And then I'll play... Um, of course, this makes four, four room gents. gents as well. So four, and then snatch for four with go again. Yeah. Okay. For us. Hmm. Okay. Do oops. <laughs> Do I want to stop the room chance? Is the first question. So my my main focus in this game is on hit effects from Brendan and just limiting the damage while I come back with my own on hit effects is kind of the key thing. So the snatch is the most important thing to me here, and I would ideally like to keep most of my hand because it's pretty good, and it's going to put some pressure on Brendan. So I'm going to take the four arcane down to thirty three. Thirty three plus thirty five. Uh, no defense on the snatch. Any attack reactions? Uh, nope. I'm going to play Take Cover from Arsenal, and we're going to reload. Uh, we are going to reload. Uh, the D-Rack was definitely the worst-case scenario for us. Not bad. But... <laughs> <laughs> I think we do want to force the issue, the info we yeah, have. I'll reload here. Yeah. Sure. sure. Well, then I will go ahead and pitch my blue. I'll make a rune chant with Grasp of the Arc Knight. And I'll swing for one arcane, two and two. Okay, we're going to take the all the arcanes down to 30, and then I'm also going to take the two as well. All right, 28 plays 35. Yep. Your turn. Okay. Let's do this. All right, tuning to two. So, main reason we did this is so that we can pitch this polar blast and play Channel Lake Frigid. Uh... Wouldn't right. have it any other way, sir. <laughs> Very important in this matchup, as you talked about disruption. Brennan talked about it. So one resource left, and then we're just going to use that and then come in with this red fatigue shot for five. This allows us to keep a card in Arsenal. There's a couple of ways I could have played this. Could have put the Channel Lake Frigid in Arsenal, flipped it to, uh, to Lexi. Um, then in that case, we wouldn't have been able to keep an Arsenal card because we would have had to pay an extra resource for this fatigue shot. Yeah, this, this fatigue shot is pretty good. How about the channel? <laughs> the card's alright. Meh. That card's alright. Um, I'll be taking the five here. Sure. So down to 30. And yes, sir. Trigger on the fatigue shots. End mm -hmm. of my turn. Uh, counter on channel like Frigid. Gonna put this Polar Blast on the bottom to pay. And then mm -hmm. Arsenal and pass. Sure. So my turn. This bad boy goes away. I will play Entwine Lightning, Pitching, Sting, and I'll fuse with Lightning Search. Okay. So, come in for two, and you have two resources left. Yes, sir. All right. Well, again, I have no defense, so I'll go down to 26. Take two. 26 plus All 30. Right. 26 for the big man. Give yourself an embodiment. Embodiment, indeed. Now I have a question. What I want to play here. Hayden not blocking for two really doesn't tell me anything. I'm not going to lie. So, that's tough. Um, 
Tells you that I like value, you know? I don't wanna don't wanna spin yeah. a card for two damage with no one hit effect. Yeah. We'll just go ahead and play this lightning surge for four. Obviously paying the resource here. Yep, so one resource, one card in hand, no go again. Yep. Alright, and then I have to decide what I want to do here. I think we're probably gonna end up defending this, because we've got you know our hand's okay. Uh, but it's also going to be also about the cards we can play. I'm going to go ahead and defend with this red hamstring shot for three and take one down to 25. All right. 25 plays 30. I will pass an arsenal. Yeah. If we can keep this channel around. Let's <laughs> <I> hope not. <laughs> the dream. All right. Tunic up to three counters. Yeah. I'm going to be pitching this blizzard to pay for this three of a kind. So drawing three cards. And now I can only play cards from my arsenal. Now I see why you said maybe we'll keep this around. <laughs> I hope not. All right, four cards in hand. One in arsenal, I have yep. two resources. Channeling Frigid staying on the battlefield for more than a single turn is uh, not great for me. But we'll see if it's doable here. Kind of the two cards you just really need to keep at the front of your mind when playing against Lexi is uh, Channel Like Frigid and Three of a Kind. It's true. All right, I'm going to start with flipping up Lexi. Otherwise, this new horizon is going to be no use to me. And I'm not going to be able to put an arrow into my arsenal. So it's a blue mm. hamstring shot. And then I'm going to vault here. Uh, I'm going to choose to give go again. And here's an endless arrow, which is then going to come in at you for four with go again. Before with go again. I feel like this is uh, something that I want to block. Um, because we do have a hamstring shot coming in. In this arrow value, of course it goes. Yeah, for us, I have pretty, I have a pretty good hand, but uh, I'm, I'm just worried about this. Channel like frigid staying around um, at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and block with Force of Nature for four. Okay, so this is going to get the plus one from the embodiment. Okay. Sure. I would, uh, like, to, would like to play that, sir. <laughs> one resource will activate Bolt here a second time. This time I'm going to choose plus one, and we're going to put a yellow Bolt and Shot in. Mm -hmm. And then come in for four, and since it's, you know, its attack is higher than its base attack, it's going to have to go again and on hit reload. I mean, for four. On hit reload with no other way to get go again. It has go again. Ah, uh, no, the, the card after. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Yes. I have a Snapdragon skills. Um, <laughs> true. I will take four. Okay, so 25 plays 26, Brendan. Uh, we won't be able to reload as we already have this hamstring shot in the arsenal. So just going to end up... I think we're probably going to pitch... Put a lot of cards in your hand there. <laughs> That's gonna be a big turn. We're gonna pitch this command and conquer, and we're gonna come in with hamstring shot for three. So no second ice card, unfortunately. So this channel like frigid is gonna go away. I'm sure you thought for three. Can't really do much with my hand. I'll block for three. Okay. Some of our viewers might notice a wardrobe change. I was literally dying in my sweatshirt. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna arsenal and pass over to you. Yep. Sweet. All right, our embodiment will go away. My turn is gonna be very straightforward, and we'll just be pitch sting a sorcery and command and conquer for six. Not a bad chance. Nice <laughs> huh, wish it was for more. But. All right. Okay, so coming for six, I think we well would like to defend this, but our hand is pretty bad. I don't want to lose this card, Brendan. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> so good. Um, also going to be the embodiment if we take this as well. Yeah. And I can't defend it. There's no way. No way. Could just soak up some damage here, though. 
Yeah, I'm going to defend for three with this fatigue shot. Okay. And take Thank three you. and lose this rain raises, unfortunately. All right, 22 players, 26. Two I will pass an arsenal. All right. Over to me. We're going to vault here for plus one. I'm going to pitch another rain raises, load this remorseless, okay. and then we're just going to come on remorseless for six. All right. Remorseless is that one that only hits like attack actions, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, if Remorseless hits a hero until the end of the next turn, whenever they play an action card, they lose one life. And uh, you can't play defense reactions from Arsenal. Remorseless is chain link. This was played from Arsenal. Dang, that one's really gonna get me this time. Um, all right. So I'm gonna take the six. Yeah. Okay. So down to twenty. Down to twenty. If you could just turn that remote sideways so we do not yep, forget about that's that. That's fine. And that's over to you. Arsenal. All right. Oof, imagine if I had the rain raises on the turn. No, it wasn't even that good, actually. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start with the Sonata. Okay. For zero. Look at three. Uh, but we'll actually hit an overload, which is nice. Um, so one arcane. Yep. Just considering my options here, I think we're probably. Yeah, we'll take the arcane, 21. Sweet. 21 plays 20, then. Yep, I'm currently no embodiment, right? No embodiment is correct. Good call, sir. <laughs> um... mm -hmm. Alrighty, then. So we are going. <laughs> yep. <laughs> is a, well, I think it's like a six card hand, but. Uh, we're going to play Force of Nature. Okay. And we're going to fuse it as well. Yep, with the tome. Okay. Yep, with the tome. And then we get an embodiment of lightning. Mm -hmm. I feel like I might be on the defensive here a little bit. <laughs> Potentially. All right. Then we're going to play E Strike for seven, which is actually eight. Yep. And you take one from. Remorseless, yeah. Remorseless I'm at 19. 19. So for 8, and if it hits, you use a draw a card. And you have one card in hand? Yes, sir. And just coming in with a Rosetta Thorn's pretty good, but it's just, just damage. Right, mm. if you get to draw a card here, I'd also be taking 8 and a 13, and then you've still got 2 cards plus a card in Arsenal. That's a big chunk of damage you could be representing. The only thing I'm worried about is if I defend this out here and use like a Scarf or a Scar or something afterwards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think my hand is good enough we to put quite a bit of pressure back on. I'm going to say no no defense, Brennan. Okay. I mean, I'm not happy about it, but I'll take 8. <laughs> Under 13. All right, I'll make an embodiment. Yeah. And I'll draw a card. Yeah. I definitely actually sequence this, like, embarrassingly incorrectly. But that's the nature of the beast, I Get guess. Get now. <laughs> Well, then, you're at 13. I am, yep. And you don't want to block. Okay. We'll play a uh, Rebel. Oh, yep. Makes four rune chance. Mm hmm. And we'll just do another E strike for seven. Oof. So, nothing too scary. Casual 19 damage turn. <laughs> <laughs> no cards in hand, right? Uh, not in hand yet. Depends how you block. Three. That is true. And I need to. Hey, I take one damage. Let's not That's forget. True. 18. Lossless, so 18. 18 plays 13. Okay, so if we don't defend this, we're going to get out to 6, which is. Uh, sorry, we're going to get out to 2 because of the yep. rune chance as well. And then you'll die. Because I'll draw a card and blade you. It's very true. Well, I have balls over so this. I can. I think what we're going to do <clears throat> is probably just throw the whole hand here and try and get back on the next turn cycle. Unique value with it. I think it is. We're going to defend three, take one to 12. 12? Yeah. Pitching Rain Razors. Rain Razors. 12 plays 18. Let's go for seven. Not prepared to throw the tunic here. Yeah, I'm going to defend for nine. Okay. That'll work. So 18 plus 12. 
18 plays 12, yep. And then my turn, just take up Tunic and pass it back, unfortunately. Alrighty. Taking up Tunic and passing her back. Hope, uh, let's hope Brennan's hand's a little bit weaker this time around. Huh. Some would say the last one was weak. No, I'm kidding. Alright. Um, could be better, I'd say. All right, we'll lead off with a Sting of Sorcery. Okay. <laughs> and just a Team Covenant Scar for Scar. So it's going to be one Arcane and four. All right, I'm going to take the Arcane down to 11. Embodiment. Yep, and then, all right, I think next turn needs to be some sort of pivot turn. And yeah, no defense, take four. Oh, the Tech Rex? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yep. Go to seven. No dragon sure. scales. One arcane and six. Man. Is that, is that all three <laughs> commander conquers, or is that just two of them? Um, that is only two. Okay, only two. Uh, well, that's pretty devastating for us. Yep. Okay. Defend for six with this commander conquer and Bolton shots. Sure, so you're taking the arcane. Yep, there was an arcane. Oh, yes, from Off disaster. Back. Yep. So six plays so, 18. Six plays 18. Yep. So on my end, um, it's like, oh, I probably could have arsenaled the sting, but it actually it added two more damage and it presented lethal, which is kind of what pushed me to do it. Still, that being said, I'm not I'm not a million percent confident in that play. Big C, flip up pole bust. Uh, frostbite for you. Okay. Then I put hamstring blue to play the ball blast. Uh, would you like to pay one or give me dominate on my next attack? Dominate. Oh, draw a card off the ball blast from Arsenal. We'll go plus one. And then we're going to load the sleep dart and then last resource. I come in for six with dominate on the sleep dart. Coming yeah, in for six with dominate on the sleep dart. Um... We're a little bit behind here, but it's not it's not over. Well, it's definitely not over. Yeah. Um I'd argue actually, yeah. Things don't look fantastic for me. We like to hear. <laughs> we like to hear. <laughs> that is what you what we like to hear. Um Yeah, mostly because I don't have a uh I don't have Snapdragon. I'm at 18, though, so 18's pretty healthy. Pretty high. So you're coming in for 6. 6 to dominate, yep, off the slipped up. I'll probably take 6 here. Sure. Down to 12. Slip up. Oh, it is. It's Arsenal and pass over to you. I'm slept. Alright. Uh, the Bramble Spark. Watching a Lightning Surge, so... Okay. Really not happy. Yeah, I'll fuse. Is that a blue weaver? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. That's gone. Sure. No, I'll play Snatch for seven. So Good. one arcane and seven. Yep. And no Snapdragons, crucially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah. No snaps. I don't think I've. Defend for six here. Yeah. And. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, so yeah, take... five, and yep, then uh, five, six, take one. Pick one, four. So I draw. Hopefully, yep. get a better arsenal. Maybe. Didn't stop that without throwing something like tunic or three cards, which just isn't viable. Okay, pick up tunic. Going to Lexi so that we can actually get an arrow in. I have this blizzard, which is just so bad on that turn that Brendan has there. Uh, so you can have frostbite. Sure. And then I'm going to vault here for plus one. Pitching this yep. bolt and shot red. Yep. The quad red and we'll uh, load endless arrow and come in for five with endless arrow. Okay, so five. Um, and you need plus one. Yeah, so it's five. Yeah. So I guess we... Hmm. So we block this. My hand is... 
also terrible. <laughs> uh, the hand is pretty bad. Bad enough that I can actually get a, a full full hand at some point. We'll see. Oh my goodness. Um, for five, eh? Five. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be tossing all of the armor plus the CMH. Okay, so walking at the five. Yep. 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 So I'll pass the turn there. No endless arrow back for me. Not great. Not great for us. Um, all right, over to you. Problem is, you now know I have this blizzard sitting here, so it's like. <laughs> yeah, I can't maybe play against it. I'm going to pay an extra two for Sonata, but also pay for the Frostbite, so it's cool. going to consume all of my blue. And I'll look at. F oh, yeah, I'll look at four cards. Yep. All right, baby, let's see an attack oh, action. Oh. <laughs> All yeah. right, two arcade. Sometimes you just got to get lucky. I got one card in hand here. Better lucky than good, Brennan. <laughs> um, Fritz, and you have a card in hand? Uh, yep. Wow. Yep. That'd be tough. Um, I mean, to be honest, these, like, these two together aren't fantastic into the blizzard if I don't have the blue, but maybe I do. Okay. Uh, take the two here. I don't think we can... Sure. Unfortunately. Yep. <clears throat> big plays by Brendan. Big plays, big plays. Well. So here's the thing. I don't have the blue, and I play the Ravenous, and it hits a blue, and then he is able to block it in Blizzard. Pretty bad for me. So I'm just going to play the Scar for a Scar without going in. They're in this Blizzard. Some would say that Blizzard is kind of face up right now. Um, <clears throat> okay. Defend for three. I wonder if we should have prevented one of that arcane, actually. We should have. Because a blade. Yeah. How would I blade? Next turn. Next turn. Just for future. Being on two mm. is just really bad for me, right? Uh, sorry, being on one, because I'm going to take one here. Yeah. So, I think I should have tuned it. I think I should have used the tuning counter to prevent an arcane. Uh, I did not. So, I'll take one. Go well, on. you don't have to worry about it, because you're actually going to take four. Oh. Okay. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> can't play around the lightning press when it just has the nuts. <laughs> All right. So, that's going to conclude the Everfest ProQuest Gauntlet series. From myself and Brendan from Arsenal Pass here on fabtcg.com. If you haven't checked out the other two videos, uh, go and do so. And, uh, you know, FabTCG also has a bunch of other great collaborations with content creators up at the moment. So make sure you go and check those out and support everyone there. Yeah, crazy game. I feel like the first half felt so in control, felt really good for myself on the Lexi side. Uh, you know, we got a, a channel like Frigid. We had a, a reasonable three of a kind turn, not the best turn. The really interesting thing about these sort of, you know, I guess, like fuseless um, Lexi decks is that they really revolve around i think a lot of these sort of key non-attack actions or even instants uh, and auras so channel like frigid we got that down important we didn't see a great rain razor turn which would have been you know if we can get a three arrow rain razor turn six damage out of that, that's huge this deck can go pretty wide we've got the bolton shots uh you know we've got the the ability to go again on voltaire we can usually get them with three arrows and rain razor is massive value unfortunately just not quite the sort of end game we wanted to brennan came with that really big 18 damage turn really swung the tempo of the game and um, didn't quite have the hand to get back into it after that. I think this is a, a deck that you really need to try and keep on the front foot as much as possible. And um, you want to find these turns and strategically block a little bit earlier. Uh, as it turned out, that kind of like hamstring shot, that blue hamstring shot, like hurt me a little bit, which I ended up keeping mm -hmm. uh, and the fatigue shot as well. So yeah, overall though, really interesting game. I really like these Lexi lists. There's so many ways to take Lexi right now. If you're heading to a pro quest, you can play it this way. You can play it with a you know, the more the ice version with the fuse, or you can play at lightning and go wide and, and be very aggressive. Anyway, Brennan, what about on the Briar side? You know, no channel mount heroics in this game, but still some pretty powerful plays coming up. Yep, so no CMHs, so we got a, you know, we had a pretty reasonable game. Just kidding, we did find the Force of Nature and the double E-Strike, which was a 
a bit of a it was pretty hilarious on my end because I actually didn't have double E strike in hand. The other E strike was off the draw. <laughs> so well played. You know how that you know well played. Thank you very much. I do agree with you uh a lot on Lexi actually, because I've been playing ProQuest and I have seen so many different variations of that mm -hmm. class. It's hilarious. I've seen your version, I've seen a heavy, you know, lightning version, and I've also seen um an ice version and everything in between as well. So I think you know, Ranger is finally in a pretty good place, very competitive right now. Let's talk about our cards. Obviously, Force of Nation, we really saw the power of that. Command and Conquer, extremely disruptive to Lexi. Sonata. So when I actually sonata in that turn, um, I did find the two. Actually, I need to find the one attack action because Hayden couldn't play around the Lightning Press at that point. Mm -hmm. But I had all non-attack actions in hand. So that's why I went for the, you know, to look at the extra card to try to secure, um, secure getting an attack action, basically closing out the game. Um, but yeah, if that had whiffed, I would have been in a pretty rough spot. But um, yeah, overall, good game. You, you saw how much sort of some of those on-hit triggers hurt me. A lot of them, you know, things like Remorseless, they don't hurt Briar too much because Briar's really very aggressive. But, you know, the Frostbite tokens, things, you know, the hamstrings, those could really, really make my turns hard to do. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, definitely. All right, lastly, just want to give a big thank you to Legend Story Studios and to FabTCG.com for giving us the opportunity to come along and do this ProQuest Everfest Gauntlet series. I'm super excited to see what happens in the lead up to the calling Indianapolis happening in just two weeks and the final week of ProQuest to see what decks kind of emerge as really the kings of this meta. We've seen some, some ebbs and flows over this season. Is it going to be Bravo Star of the show and Prism that continue to dominate? Is Viscera going to come back? Are we going to see Lexi, maybe Briar, uh, surprise some people when we get to Indianapolis? We'll see what happens. But again, thank you very much. And from myself and Brendan, see you next time. See ya.